I'm going to tell the tube where we are. We're Chloe and Matthew, two wine-loving foodies who have set out to explore the world one bite, sip and slurp at a time. In this series, we're exploring every iconic wine region in Australia to get a lowdown on the juice, the people and what makes them special. McLaren Vale, a wine region tucked right up on the coast south of Adelaide. While known for the usual Australian Shiraz, the Vale has also built a reputation with some more eclectic varieties. We keep hearing this is the place to be, so here we are, trying to find the best winery in the Vale, which we're going to rank based on the people, the wine, and the experience or cellar door. See if this place maybe feels like home. This is the oldest winery in the Clarin Vale. Yeah, and oldest, years. Uh, uh, yeah, still owned in by the founding family. It's coastal as well. Yeah. Uh, not many wine regions are coastal, so it's got that beautiful maritime influence and those sea breezes, and so you, we can grow a big variety of fruit down here. It's just yeah. perfect. The Kay family can trace their roots back to 1724 in Scotland, but the winery story starts with brothers Bert and Fred in 1891 with the purchase of a piece of property named Amory. They planted the first vineyards and built the original winery, still being used today as the core of the facility. Hi Matthew. Partner Chloe. Hello. Hi Chloe. I'm chief interfere. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Colin Kay, the family patriarch. Born in the family homestead on site, he held the reins as winemaker for over 40 years, leading the winery through modernization and a new focus on premium wines. Now retired, he still sits on the board managing the family business. We were lucky enough to get to spend some time with him and hear about his winemaking philosophy and pick up a few tips from the master. Yeah, there's one thing with these when, when the maturities are going up slowly, you've got to learn to sit on your hands a bit, not, not jump too soon, otherwise you, you, you're not getting the grapes quite ripe enough. It's got more acid than fruit. Yeah. You just got to wait the grapes to tell you when they're ready. Yeah. They'll taste right. Yeah. got to taste them. As you can see, we opted for the outdoor seating with an epic view of the vineyards and a bit of a snack to go along with our tasting flight. So while Matthew is figuring out the drone, I'll quickly give you guys an update. This one's this one's gonna score pretty high. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. People, amazing. The experience, the cellar door, pretty top notch. The wines, we're just starting to get into the higher end stuff and the cheap stuff was great. The cheap stuff was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> guys, they're really setting the bar high. I don't know if K Brothers was the best place to <laughs> to hit this off at or, or was it only time will tell all right guys well what's the verdict i mean that k brothers set the bar high yeah. so we're grading three things we're grading the cellar door the people and the wine okay let's start off with the people the people are five five out of five awesome people so friendly so knowledgeable eating column was cool yeah okay so number two the experience Awesome. You know what? It's really hard because they're first, so it is no one, no one to compare it to. Let's hold off. On, let's just do people and wine. Okay. Because experience, yeah, experience can be subjective. So we'll create experience after. Then the wine. Honestly, I had some of that spicy sauce, and my palate was completely ruined. So I'm going to leave this one to Matthew. I'm going to go four out of five. So far they're scoring pretty high and now we're off to our next winery, let's see what they got. Primo Grilli arrived in South Australia in 1953 from Limarque region of Italy. 20 years later, in 1973, he and his wife planted the vineyard. It's looking beautiful. Look at those fruity fruits. Mmm, yummy. 1979 marked the first vintage and the newly built winery with son Joe taking the lead as winemaker. Sit down, enjoy the tasting flight um, and have fun. Great. And make yourselves at home really is the sensibility we want. They haven't stopped since, continuing to innovate and push the boundaries of modern winemaking. 
They have brought their family story back in full circle with the inclusion of two wines made in Italy included in their portfolio. Now, the next two you're going to try mm -hmm. are the same wine from different vintages. The first being our 2020, which is our current release. Angel Gully is the name of the vineyard in Clarendon. So Clarendon's a sub-region of McLaren Vale. Mm -hmm. There's more elevations. So that elevation, again, slightly cooler nights than down here on the valley floor. It's a more beautiful, luscious, spicy fruit. The treatment on these two wines, 18 months in oak, a combination of new and old French and American. Mm -hmm. It will set down. These are wines designed to sell it. That's the Samberlin. Uh, <laughs> so babe, you know how on our travels, like everyone keeps on saying McLaren Bell, McLaren Bell, McLaren Bell. Mm -hmm. I totally get it. <laughs> yes. 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 The wines here definitely had more of an old world feel to them with more complexity and rusticness to them rather than big, bold fruits and tannin. Um, it's floral. You get that sort of slight muscat. All right, guys, I am totally biased about that place. That was the most Italian place we've come across on our travels. I freaking loved it. The wines... I'm gonna go 4.5. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna stay at 3.5. But there were some really special wines, babe. That Angel Gully Shiraz was nice, and the aged one was ridiculous. Yeah, like to me, they're, they're hitting up with some of my favorites. So I'm going 4.5, you're doing 3.5, so we're gonna go 4 on that. That's happy medium. Experience. <laughs> This is a tough one because I think it's for wine nerds, it was a great experience. If I'm talking for the general wine public who are coming out for a day in McLaren, it might not have been as exciting for them. 3.5 on experience. People, I'm gonna go five. She was lovely. She knew her stuff. She knew a lot about Italy. So, I mean, biased. I'll go 4.5. 4.5, okay, cool. So that's our score and let's hit the last stop. For the day. There's olives on this tree. Look, let's show them the olives. Show them the olives. When Hugh Hamilton founded his eponymous winery, he was the fifth generation of the Hamilton wine dynasty with a history stretching back over 180 years. Hello. Yep. It's great to yeah. see guys. It's great to see. The black sheep of the family, the winery embraces his character and it's reflected in the wines. Is this gonna be the place? Hugh's daughter Mary continues the legacy as the winery's current CEO. Saparavi is the oldest grape in the world. Wow. So it comes from Georgia, out near Russia. Yep. Georgia's obviously a very small place, but it's a very old place. They started winemaking over 8,000 years ago, and the berry that Saparavi is, is a very small one, mm -hmm. and it's similar to Shiraz in the sense it's gonna give you deep plum flavors. It's a pretty color. Well, oh, it's an actual red, a red juice grape, red flush grape. What do you mean? Red wine is made from grapes that have red skin, but the flesh and the juice is actually white. So all the really? color comes from the skins. Ah. Saparavi is one of the few grapes where the flesh and the juice is actually red. It's interesting. It's hard to describe. Like I can't really, it's really hard to put like normal notes onto it. It honestly tastes like barbecue sauce. Like yeah. there's a lot of fruit there first. I can't tell you exactly what fruit, red fruit, maybe cranberry or like cherry or like I cram it like an unripe cherry mm -hmm. it's got like an unripe cherry maybe a bit of meatiness but more like a smokiness it's not smoky like barbecue it's smoky like grilling all right winery number three for the day let's start with wines i'm gonna give them a three i'm gonna give them a two and a half remember this is a biased opinion cellar door on the other hand that's Five. That's, five. That's definitely hands down five. People, friendly people, friendly dude, knowledgeable. Probably say maybe a four. 
not for any other reason than maybe because they're really busy. So. They're really cool, but they weren't as in-depth knowledgeable on the lines. But hands down, like if you want to come to McLaren and just enjoy a beautiful day, like it That's is great. stunning. Right, we're on to the last one for the day. This one we just kind of snuck in. We weren't supposed to be coming here, but you know us, so it's good. Mitolo is a young winery comparatively, founded in 2000 with its first Shiraz. However, the family's roots in Australia stretch back to the 1950s and the wine roots reach back generations to Italy's Abruzzo region. This winery was a pleasant way to end our day, but wasn't a real standout for us, getting 3.0s across the board. It smells good. Okay, I don't think you should get behind the vehicle today. It smells good. This is how I evaluate wines. That's meaty. Like that is savory. That's savory, savory Syrah. Shiraz. The next morning. history stretches back to its founding in 1967 with the first vintage in 1969. The original farmhouse, built in 1860, now houses the cellar door. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a small space and was extremely busy, so we really weren't able to film much. Okay, quick rundown people, because we are about to hit up our next winery. Three, two, one, lines from one to five. such fond memories of this place and we were so happy that we could come back here and it was just how I remembered. These wines were just simply good. They're complex but not overly to the point that they can't be enjoyed in the day to day. Fruity but not excessively so. Just great wines. What are we talking about? What is this? So this is Tempranillo. Do you know what I like about these? I like they're like such a cool mix between New World and Yeah. Like the style's not completely old world, but it's not completely new world. They're all solid ones, I like them. It's definitely got like Scott. some old world dustiness and complexity, but it's got that new world like freshness. And if you're doing a couple of days a week, they're gonna want you to be at a more salary level than a consulting level. The cheers to Zach who made an appearance in this video. A voiceover appearance with no voice. Put a pop-up photo of him right here. Oh, there's even space for it. K Brothers, we love that your Instagram tag is at K Brothers. The Clarabelle's cool. We love the Clarabelle. The people are friendly, the wines are good, but at the same time there's so much diversity. Ooh, I like that. Mm. Fruity, herbaceous, Peppery, delicious. Not surprisingly, Samuel's Gorge did pretty well scoring across the board. Gave him a 4.0 for the wines and the people, and a 4.5 for the experience in that epic view. Samuel's Gorge is a vibe. Get amongst it. You want to tell the tube where we are? Australia. We're at 
Yangara to taste Hickenbottom's wines. Where did you first try these wines, babe? Uh, I picked up some of these wines. I want to say, I'll have to look, but I want to say I got them through Garagista back in Seattle, and I really freaking liked them. And I know who the consulting winemaker is from the U.S., and I love his wines. So. so here we are. Beautiful property. The range is still only five wines, so it's not a huge portfolio. Mine is early 2000s. Our first vintage was 2001 for Yangara, and then purchased Hickenbotham in 2012 after a couple of years of working with the Hickenbotham family to take over. We have the first of Chris's wines, kind of Chris's influence on how the estate was going to kind of go into the future that he was just said, we're not touching a Merlot, we'll make one, we'll make a really beautiful one, we'll try and make it one of those top Merlots. And we're pretty proud of the work we do at Moving In to make sure that both, I mean, both are organic and biodynamic, they're certified now, and that's where everything kind of starts. Everything's aligned. You're it's a really this. wild portfolio. Yeah, so, right, two in this one. BB, obviously, both Chris's wines from now on. On the left is The Nest, which is a Cabernet Franc. And then on the right is the Truman, which is a Cab Sav. Cab Sav has been in the range since the beginning, and that's the one you said you have some familiarity That's the one. The Hickenbotham Vineyard was originally planted in 1971. Now owned by the Jackson Family Wine Group, it shares a cellar door with another winery in their portfolio, Yangara. Yangara has a focus on Rhone varieties and a specifically strong focus on Grenache. Bluet Springs Tawar has garnered a reputation for excellent Grenache with its sandy soils and higher elevation. Of course, we figured while we were here, we should taste those as well. Pretty historic for the region when you consider the volume of it. Almost 80 years old without any irrigation and in a really sandy profile has meant that it's kind of landed its perfect environment. All right, guys, now we have to score and I feel like this one's going to be pretty easy. All right, wines? Five. Five. Five out of five, 100%. Cellar door? Cellar door, I'm gonna, ooh, this is tough. For me, it was a five. It's very like European feel. If you're going to Barolo having a tasting, that's what their tasting room's gonna look like, so I might be a bit biased. People, okay. I'm gonna go 4.5 for clear winner, yeah. Yeah, Pick and Botham wins. All right, people. Bye. Bye. <laughs> McLaren Vale is sitting high up on the list of wine regions that we've visited so far. The climate is pretty comfortable, the proximity to Adelaide keeps us entertained and we found some really nice wines here. But it still doesn't quite feel like home, so we're back on the road, heading to the next wine region on our list. Join us in our next video as we head further east into Coonawarra, the South Australian home of one of our favourite varieties, Cabernet Sauvignon. We're going to find the best cab in Coonawarra. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you'll know which one we pick up for our dinner table.